ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ಸಮ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ Hello. Uh I just arrived today. My name is Richard. Thank you for having me. What what else should I say? <laughs> Whatever you want. What brings you here, Richard? Uh Welcome first uh, of all. I uh, thank you. I came here um, about maybe 15 years ago for a couple of day day visits to listen and um It wasn't me. Uh my partner is traveling for work and so I decided to travel with her and return to hear more teachings. Wonderful. My name is Isha. I've been here many times. <laughs> yes. It's I good to see you. Yes. Good yes. to see you. Nancy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Okay, my name is Nancy and I'm here for the first time. and i feel like this is a really great treat because i've heard about uh pooja swami from eugene and so now to be in his um place is just a really um wonderful circle and it brings a lot more depth to the the tradition in the shastra that i've been learning with swami nuji and uh i feel very welcome here and i'm thankful thank you people don't volunteer they get called up <laughs> um hi i'm keerthi i'm from uh, atlanta and i have uh, like i've been learning and uh, like with and this family ji since like la- last 3 years and i'm very blessed to be able to attend this retreat in person and uh, just can i hope i my prayer is to continue learning vedanta and that's it thank you <laughs> Namaste my name is Manjula Reddy I'm coming from Atlanta Georgia as well I have known Swamini ji for the past uh, 15 no more like 20 years I guess so I am so blessed to be here in person uh, after you know covid silence for a long time and she's been a pillar of support for my uh, in my life and uh, I truly appreciate it thank you I'm Shanti Ramakrishnan. Uh, I was in Atlanta and Swamini ji had come I don't know how many years back we we were we are very fortunate to have her and uh, still uh, we are blessed till now and still we are still in uh, learning from her so thank you so much for the entire teachings and I hope we are following it also living it then thank you thank you thank you uh 
I couldn't escape you, Swamiji. <laughs> Pranam. Mm -hmm. I've been coming to this ashram for many years, maybe a couple of decades, but I met Swaminiji, I think it was 2018. And I'm not sure if it's the right word, but <laughs> Swaminiji, you grew on me. And uh, anytime I need any kind of clarity or any guidance, I just email her and she replies back. And I'm so blessed to be in uh, soaking in the teaching <laughs> and then the way she unflow, unfolds the teachings. Yeah, thank you. Namaste everyone, I am uh, Ramakrishnan and uh, I have also been studying with uh, Swaminiji uh, for a very long time. Um, we were in Atlanta and uh, you know Swaminiji used to come there every few months and uh, we have been teaching, uh, learning a lot of texts from her and um, I am uh, really blessed to have learnt a lot from her and, and continuing to learn. Uh, online also, uh, we've been learning a lot of texts, and uh, this one is again a, a new text for me. So I'm really enjoying the classes here, the Jivan Mukti Vivekananda classes. Uh, thank you very much, Swamiji. Thank you. Rosa hasn't said anything. Okay. <laughs> you have gone? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, I went. Uh, no, no, this, Mr. Nagi. Oh. Yeah. Oh, cool. oh, cool. I was trying to hide Swaminiji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, namaste, uh, Swaminiji. I namaste. attended uh, Swaminiji's camp first in 2018, and uh, for the past few years, for the last couple of years, I've been attending online. Yes. Thank you. Last couple of years, everyone has been attending online. <laughs> no other choice. Uh, Vivek will introduce himself after his musical offering. Okay? Or do you want to introduce yourself before? Okay, you can introduce now. And then you can sing. <clears throat> Hari Om. My name is um, Vivek Krishna. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I've been studying music. I did a five-year course with Padmashri Gundicha brothers, learning Drupad, one of the most ancient styles singing. I'd like to share Kirtan with you. You guys are welcome to join along. The composition is called Namah Shivai Om Namah Shivai Har Har Bhole Namah Shivai Om 
नम शिव ओ नम शिव धर हर बोले नम शिव गंगाधरा शिव गंगाधरा हर हर भोले नाम शिव गंगाधरा शिव गंगाधरा हर हर भोले नाम शिव ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय धर धर भोले नम शिवाय ओम झटा धरा शिव झटा धरा हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय झटा धरा शिव झटा धरा हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय सोमेश्वरा शिव सोमेश्वरा हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय सोमेश्वरा शिव सोमेश्वरा हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय विश्वेश्वरा शिव विश्वेश्वरा हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय विश्वेश्वरा शिव विश्वेश्वरा हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय विश्वेश्वराय शिव विश्वेश्वराय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय हर हर नम कोटेश्वरा शिव कोटेश्वरा हर हर भोले नम शिवाय हर हर बोले ना 
कोटेश्वर शिव कोटेश्वर हर हर भोले नाम शिवाय कोटेश्वर शिव कोटेश्वर हर हर भोले नम शिवा ओ नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम शिवाय हर हर भोले नम Vivian can introduce herself. <laughs> what what brings you here? Yes, yes. Well put. This is an online question. As for the means of knowing Atma, I have a doubt as to why perception of absence, anupalabdhi. don't look at me blankly okay yeah <laughs> just because it was two days ago yeah <laughs> anupalabdhi <laughs> the cognition of absence why can't that be a means for knowing the atma is the question self ignorance seems to be about seeing limitations in my nature that are not actually there in which case self ignorance is due to defective anupalabdhi question mark if so why not say that the words of the shastra correct this defect so that the absence of limitations in the atma is correctly perceived good point interesting question but the atma you know the, the uh, atma doesn't have absence of limitations fullness you know is uh, uh, is not defined in terms of absence that is that is why fullness means it is presence because fullness ananta ananda is the last word in the string of words and each one we have to take that's why each one is there the first word is sat or satyam which means is is signifies presence very, very interesting very interesting why not say that we are removing the absence of uh, uh, you know how yeah the absence of limitations mm, uh, 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 why not define ananda as the absence of limitations so if we define atma as the absence of limitations then limitations becomes satyam more satyam than atma <laughs> so the position is this the, the the revelation is this that the word limitlessness 
Ananta, Ananda have to do with what? Ananta and Ananda have to do with the presence of fullness. Because the word Ananta, as we study in the Taittiriya Upanishad, is not hanging there by itself. It is connected to two other words. Each one is informing the other and building up on the other. The first one is Satyam, presence. It is present. Asti, asti iti upalabhyate. So, speaking of upalabdhi, the gain, it is understood, it is, it is understood as is, 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 is. So why not say absence of limitations? Absence of limitations is. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the upalabdhi, the, the anupalabdhi, the uh, cognition of absence is talking about is not, that's why I said it is used only relatively. It is used to ask is what is not and where it is not. Meaning elsewhere it still is. There is no such thing called absence. So Sat is everything. Everything is Sat. And so Sat, and what kind of Sat is it? It happens to be a sentient Sat, not an insentient Sat. And so, it meaning, it recognizes itself and everything becomes evident to it. Consciousness, awareness. And so these two words, we cannot remove from the definition of Atma and only take limitlessness. Because he, when we say limitless, that means absent of, absence of limitations. Uh, we, we can easily go that route. But however, even though we, we say limitlessness because we really don't have a word. So bogged down we are by limitations, <coughs> by the notion of limitations that <coughs> we don't have a word. We don't have a word in English for ananta. And since limitations are taken by the human mind to be real, this is a mistake as you have pointed out, since limitations are taken to be real, they, uh, you know, that seems to be the reference point to remove that notion, we use the word limitlessness. So even though the word limitlessness is negatively defined, it is not, it is not understood as the absence of limitations. Rather, it is understood as the presence of that Sat, whose nature is fullness unchanging, ever-present fullness. And so that is why we cannot use the cognition of absence to know the Atma, because the first thing we encounter in the definition of Atma is Sat. So, in other words, we can't cognize that which is by talking about it as though it is not or as though it is devoid of something. Even though in the, for the pedagogy, from the pedagogical standpoint, from the teaching standpoint, we have to resort to certain ways of speaking, certain ways of understanding, certain ways of, uh, you know, certain uh, lingo we have to engage in. But uh, that is just to give a proper understanding. That's, that's the only reason. Yeah. I hope that is clear. Mahamantra Om Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare.
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम राम हरे हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे राम राम हरे हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे If I understand correctly, Brahman is the awareness in me. Yes, I would just say Brahman is the awareness that is me. Yeah, I would amend it and edit it a little bit, <coughs> tweak it. The subject of my experiences, but Brahman is also said to be everywhere, being the substratum of the material universe. How to reconcile Brahman, the inner awareness, with Brahman, the substratum of material existence? Wow! This is Vedanta. <laughs> this is exactly what we are about. Because there is no reconciliation. Because that awareness is everything. So when you say it is awareness, the awareness is is associated with, as it were, identified with a body-mind sense complex. In other words, the awareness is wearing a body suit, a male suit, a female suit, a doggy suit, tiger suit. It's all a costume, as it were, for this awareness. And because of ident because of the presence of the I notion, which finds it easier to identify with the suit rather than the awareness, there is, you know, this is what. And why does this happen? Because of self ignorance. There is, the, it is easier to identify with the suit rather with the indweller, so to speak. So self-awareness is a jiva, or is uh, you know, the, sorry, the um, the jiva is awareness in a body suit, wearing a dunce cap. I am self-ignorant sitting in a corner. That same awareness from the standpoint of this, the, the, the universe and the maker of the universe, we have a different iteration of that same awareness because the upadhi with which it is associated is different. There's no translation for the word upadhi, what to say. Upadhi means that which is uh, uh, which is a, an as though container. So, for the jiva, the awareness is as though cloaked in a finite, self-ignorant upadhi. And, for, and that same awareness, when it, it is dressed in an infinite upadhi, it is called Ishvara. 
infinite knowledge, infinite power, infinite uh, vairagya, dispassion, infinite strength, infinite abundance, resources, infinite capacity, all this Shadaishwarya, six forms of uh, glories. And so it is like looking at a small wave and the ocean. So both are water. Both are water. Wave is nothing but water. The ocean is nothing but water. But the wave, if it had a human mind, would uh, wave this knowledge off. No, 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 no. <laughs> I can't be whole. <laughs> How can I be ocean? Ocean is God. Ocean is all. I am small. Ocean is the cause. I am because. And if ocean is God, I must be odd. This is what it will say. But if it has a teacher, if it has a human mind, then it will need a teacher because it will be filled with complexes. It has to be told, what are you made up of? They say, I'm made up of water. Very good, fantastic. Clap, clap, clap. Well, now, what is the ocean made up of? Ocean is also made up of water. The difference is called mithya. It's an as-though difference because essentially it is the same. The iterations are different. One is samashti, the total. The other the, is individual, vyashti. That's the only difference. Otherwise, that same awareness, that same consciousness. So, Ishvara wearing a wonderful cloak, which says, which is on which the words ruler of the universe is embroidered and sits there and, you know, and is seen as the, with infinite powers. Whereas I, as awareness, sitting in this body, everything is finite. In terms of strength, I am finite. <laughs> in terms of uh, knowledge, finite. In terms of memory, extremely finite. Uh -huh. And in terms of resources, finite. The bank balance is always scraping the <laughs> bottom. <laughs> so, every which way, if you take this to be real, every which way you see, you come up short. In terms of compassion, finite. In terms of patience, finite. And Ishvara opposite of that. All resources, Ishvara is rich, you know, everything is him, <laughs> her. And strength, infinite measure. Knowledge, infinite measure. Memory extends up to and beyond how the last cycle of the universe was created. <laughs> so, what to talk of any kind of forgetting. So, it looks to be a unfathomable, canyon-esque gap between the Jiva and Ishvara. But this is what, it, it is like an equation. It's like an equation where you have single digits on one side and you have double digits on the other side. But when you add or subtract them, let's say the number is the same. 4 plus 5 is equal to 100 minus 91. Immediately there is like, what? <laughs> How can they be the same? <laughs> so you have to resolve each side. An inquiry into the I, from the standpoint of my body, mind, sense complex, is called Tvam Pada Vichara. So that's not enough. It's not enough to say, I am awareness. That is not uh, knowledge uh, fully. 
you have to, you know, you have to go beyond that. You have to go to the quote unquote Ishvara side and then do the equation, do the math there also. You have to see that when you take away all the things that really don't belong, all knowledge, I mean, it is dispensable. It is something that, you know, is, it is, is put on this awareness and without all knowledge, awareness is still awareness. All omniscient, all pervasive, all these things you take out, all that is there is awareness, which happens to be omniscient and all pervasive anyway. And so you see that Ishvara is essentially awareness and Jiva is also essentially awareness. Ishvara knows it, Jiva is yet to know that. That is what the thing is. Om Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Gauri Ma Jagad Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe Jagad Ambe Jai Ambe Gauri Ma Ambe 
अंबे गौर मा जगद अंबे गौर मा अंबे गौर मा जगद अंबे गौर मा अंबे जगद अंबे जय अंबे गौर मा अंबे जगद अंबे जय अंबे गौर मा जगद अंबे गौर मा जगद अंबे गौर मा जगद अंबे गौर Yesterday we have discussed Adi Shankaracharya's reply to the question about where self-ignorance resides. It is in the nature of the one who asks the question. Usually, nature of the jiva is described as Satchidananda Atma. Can you please explain this as though contradiction, and more specifically, why Adi Shankara chose to use the word Swarupa, nature? A very good question. We don't know, and we can't ask him. <laughs> so, prashtu swarupe eva. So, I suppose he was using the colloquial meaning of the word nature, which is the ahankara, etc., to, with which the person identifies. I think that's what it is. And uh, because you know, you say, "Oh, that's his nature." That's her nature. And we don't mean that many times. Why is this person complaining? That's her nature. That's his nature. <laughs> he always complains. We talk like this. And here we are not talking about Satchidananda Atma. Why? Because Satchidananda Atma doesn't complain. Simple. And here also, the residence of ignorance, the place of location of ignorance, uh, you know, the prashtuhu swarupe. You know, you, so you, you, you can't sort of uh, assume that. And so you, one, one meaning is that you can say that it is a colloquial usage. But having said that, there could be a deeper meaning to the word Swarupa. Because we also discussed, around the same time, we also discussed how ignorance is Brahmashraya. Ah. Ignorance is, uh, is uh, uh, as it were, sustained by Brahman. So in that sense, it is in the Swarupa anyway. <laughs> ah. So it could be like that. Satchidananda Atma is big enough to, as though, harbor ignorance or bring it to light even. Ignorance being mithya, it doesn't affect the Satchidatma, Satchidananda Atma. Yeah. This is what we were talking about, the two schools, Bhamati school and what was the other one? Vivarana school. This is what we discussed. Other questions? Yes. What is ignorance made of? What's meant over here? And how does it migrate from one birth to the next? From one brain to next? One birth. One birth. Oh, one birth. The raw material, you know, it's like asking, 
You know the story of the emperor's clothes? Yeah. Are they made of silk or velvet? <laughs> ah. Right? So, emperor's clothes is based on a children's story. Very interesting story. Where this fellow was going and he was very strict and cruel and and one day he just went without clothes, he forgot to wear clothes and everybody said, oh, what lovely robes. And because he was deluded and the other people were also for the sake of the, uh, keeping their head on their shoulders so that they would not be decapitated, they also had to uh, humor him. Until a small child said, what is it that they all were admiring? Oh, the finest silk and real gold thread embroidery. Fantastic, it is suiting our king so much. And one little boy in the crowd yelled, what are you talking about? He's not wearing any clothes. <laughs> so discussing the ingredients of Ajnanam is kind of like feeling the silk of the emperor's clothes. How soft it is. Is, is it uh, from China <laughs> or is it from India? And is it, uh, is it from the silk where the uh, silkworms have been fed, the choicest of mulberry leaves? So we, just, we can just spin the wonderful uh, uh, story around that, which does not really exist. Because the Atma is Satyam Jnanam Anantam. It is all knowledge, it is I. So, that being said, the, uh, so then you cannot at the same time say ignorance is non-existent. You cannot say that because otherwise nobody would have come here. If <laughs> yeah, we have to guard our jobs, you know, yeah. So, so we can't say it is non-existence, why? Because it is felt, it is experienced, and it is experienced painfully, where I take everything to be me, I take everything personally, and I am in sorrow, I am in shock, I am in fear. This is what happens. And so the ignorance, or rather, you know, its broods, its offspring, the offspring of ignorance <laughs> is felt. Welcome. So the offspring of ignorance is, you know, we, 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 they're brats. You know, whatever babies ignorance had, they, they're not well behaved at all. The first one is all kinds of desires, karma. This is the, uh, what is that called? Family tree of ignorance. Ancestry.com. <laughs> If you put ignorance, this is what will come up. Had a son by the name of Kama, mad desires. Kama is, was born mad, okay? Born insane. And then... No, no, don't go on that line. Come back here, okay? <laughs> when there is Kama, <laughs> when there is Kama, when there is a desire, ah, it, it doesn't let you sit quiet because I told you, karma is mad. It sits on your head and pounds your head until you do something about it. So the grandbaby of Mataji Avidya is matriarch, Avidya, is what? Karma. And then, karma, karma has twins, Papa Punya. <laughs> yeah. And then there is Punar Janma in the next generation, rebirth, into the same cycle again and again. And so this, uh, this ignorance is very mischievous, to say the least, because we feel the effects of it, we feel the broods of it. It is, it, you know, it uh, itself, sometimes you cannot locate it, you cannot say it is sitting here. She is avidya, 
is kind of pulls the strings from the background, makes her children and grandchildren wreak havoc, uh, and herself almost keeps to herself almost invisible. So, this is the. Uh, so, if you want to look at ingredients, this is what it's made up of, in a way. But we have to understand that it is ultimately non-existent. It is existent, it, it appears as existent because I suffer from its effects. I mean the individual suffers from the effect. And then, and then therefore it needs to be corrected. So if it is corrected, you know, one can take to a life of a kuti chara sannyasi. That sounds, you know, very cushy. I think we should change the name to Kushichara. Yeah, very cushy. You have a nice apartment in the backyard of your children or relatives. You are fed and you are undisturbed and you can siphon off their cable TV and Wi Fi also. Very nice life. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> Very nice. Kutichara. You can do that. So, the, uh, if it is corrected, you can take, you, you can have various, you can enter into various forms of sannyasa, the one that lives behind the house and the one that lives near all the watering places for pilgrimages, like this. Or you can be a Tridandi Swami. What is a Tridandi Swami? We'll see in detail tomorrow. But for now, the one that carries a three, three staffs. Inter some, sometimes they're intertwined. Three staffs. Staffs doesn't mean staff people who work for them. That's not... <laughs> staff means stick. Fancy way of saying stick. Why do they carry three sticks? Because... The, the, the one stands for the body, the other stands for the mind, and the third stands for the senses. And they say, okay, I'm going to invoke the body in one, and the mind and the senses in another, and I'm going to be free. So it's kind of a, uh, the, 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 the staff of a sannyasi, the, the staff carrying kind, is, is a sense of, is a kind of a depersonalization. There is also there are also Ekadandi Swamis who carry only one staff, that is the Ahankara. You see, you go to any of the traditional mats, you go to Sringeri Mat, everything, and that staff will be there. They, they say, okay, the ego, you know, is is here. It I am I am Satchidanandam Brahma, but then the ego goes wherever I go, and so therefore let it be in this staff. So it's a kind of getting distance from that. So if one knows this, one can take to a life of uh, renunciation. If one does not want to renounce, then one can just be in the, in the society and enjoy. No problem, enjoy the knowledge. If this ignorance is, is not banished, and if the wrong understanding of myself is not corrected, then what happens is that there are still a lot of desires. This is how the rebirth comes into play. There are still a lot of desires left because karma is active. Karma is sitting on the head and saying, give me this, give me this, give me this, desire this, desire this. And so the strongest desire at the time of passing decides the next birth because that strong desire strongly goes in for a new body. So, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Uh, died. <laughs> Contemplating on ice cream. The, the fellow died. Next life what? Hmm? Come on, we are just making stuff up. You can also help. Next life, what? Huh? Cow. Well, the cow, you know, it is. Well, the cow produces the ice cream, but here the person did not want to produce. 
person wanted to consume. Ah. Huh? Yeah, could be somebody whose, whose job is in Baskin Robbins. Or it could be some kind of lactobacillus bacteria. <laughs> always in the, <laughs> always there. Or it could be listeria, if it needed to. <laughs> listeria is a kind of a toxic bacteria. In milk products, if, if it's gone bad, if it's gone off, then you take that, you eat that milk product. And you just, you know, you don't, cannot come out of the bathroom for three days. This is what it is. Yeah. So, this way, so this is how that strong desire uh, gives the body, which is conducive to fulfilling that desire. There is one uh, Tibetan book of death and dying. Have you read that? It's very nice. It is worth reading. And there towards, uh, somewhere towards the end, a very interesting scenario is talked about. All these dead beings, disembodied beings, they, they are so eager to be reborn that they join marriage processions. This is the Tibetan belief. That they join marriage processions because they, they hope to be that, that the newly married couple will be mommy and daddy. <laughs> Because I'm so eager to have a new body. So they jostle each other and they push each other out. And, uh, you know, they very, very nicely, very uh, humorously it has been talked about. So the desire, the clamoring for the body is so uh, imminent. You know, after the passing of this one, after dropping of one body, because the force of the desires is too much. And the desires themselves are not wrong, but when they exert pressure, they become binding desires, and that is what is the problem. And so therefore, uh, ignorance has to be uh, addressed. Did I answer part one, part two? Yeah? Okay. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. Incredible. Mm. It's like mm. I don't know what, what, is there an to that? Yes. Before I answer that, she's giving you a very big compliment. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it is Ishvara, it is Bhagavan. It is, it is the, that. The voice, in fact, Krishna, Lord Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. When somebody can sing well, I am the voice in the singer. I am, you know, the strength in the strong. So, so that is what it is. It is moving because it is perfect. And, and whatever is perfect is, is, is Bhagavan. So you are the musician. Is also in touch with Bhagavan, is one with Bhagavan. And the listeners are also one, there's that subject object divide goes, you know. And so when you say, Why can't I be like that? It's not that you want to sing like that, you want to be one with everything like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you come tomorrow again for the knowledge, <laughs> and day after, <laughs> and the day after. And and you will also, uh, more, uh, more and more you can enjoy the truth of yourself. And the subject-object divide is, is as though, and it is understood. Yeah. 
Yes, Richard. Yes. And a non binding desire, yes. And is that, um, can you elaborate on what is something that must be expressed or lived out in one's karma versus maybe that can be. Okay. Um, something that could be. Do I start over? No. Um, What's the, what must be expressed through karma, maybe that, or that maybe could be undone in the mind, the vasana through inquiry, alone. You know there is something called prabala prarabdha, which means a prarabdha that attacks with great force. This is explained in Vishwamitra, sage Vishwamitra's life. He wanted to be a Maharshi. He said, how do you do that? Well, you know, it, it, all beco it was all because of a cow, actually. He was a warrior. He was a Senapati, a commander-in-chief, and he took his army to get fed at an ashram long after mealtime. Didn't expect much, but they thought, okay, even if there's no food, we'll rest. But that sage, the head of the ashram, had a wish-fulfilling cow. And he, and he just said, dinner for 200 people, please. And she obliged immediately, and the food was delicious. And he was fascinated. And he was not a very good guest. In fact, he was a pest. He said, can I have the cow? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't have the cow. Why? Because in order to command the wish-fulfilling cow, wish -fulfilling cow, you have to be above desires. You have to be free of desires. How do I, what do I do to be free of desires? You have to become a Maharshi, Mahan Rishi, a great Rishi, you have to become. How do I do that? Go to the mountain and practice some tapas. So he started to practice tapas. And he heard some anklet bells, and it was this beautiful woman, <laughs> a heavenly nymph. And he felt that there was no way he could continue with this tapas and become a Maharshi. He had to put a pause button on that, marry her, have children, enjoy the family life, and then come back and take up the Maharshi business. This is what he felt. Then, so this is called Prabala Prarabdha. When somehow, you, despite your best efforts, you are overwhelmed by that desire, it really does not spare you at all. Then there is nothing more to do except to say, okay, let me at least, I have made this decision to do this or go this way. Let me at least not be hijacked by this. We, we, we surround ourselves in prayer. But that's only once in a while. Most of the desires can be bypassed with effort. Can be bypassed. You don't have to experience and live out every single desire, every single fancy. You don't have to do that. Because one desire is like another desire. It's all the same. Yeah. This is not a question, Swami, or maybe it is a question. Can in one of the satsang, you can, uh, can you please describe the symbolism of all that Sri Dakshinamurti has? Yeah. We can Ganga do that tomorrow. and all of that. We can do that I mean, tomorrow. Because it's too late. We'll do Thank that you. tomorrow, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The satsang kind of picked up after 8.30, so. Yeah. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashchittu Khabhag Bhavet Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma Amritangamaya 
ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು